Good morning, everyone. And uh, it's lucky you're all here because I'm looking for all these people in this room, all of you, to get a sense of yourselves today and what is possible. And if this conference is about anything, it's got to be about um, transforming opinions. We don't want to be having the same breaking convention in 2023 or whatever, where everybody comes back, you know, back slapping, saying everything is, uh, is, is wonderful. In fact, I've come to the realization that uh, not only am I a criminal solicitor, I am, as Amy said, we're, we're criminals. I, I was with uh, T Ferry today, come out, come out wherever you are. I think, you know, you, you have to use some drugs to know anything about drugs. This is an experience of the self. This is something that nobody can do for you. No expert, no doctor, no uh, politician, no judge should have sovereignty over your own uh, mind. Now, I know I'm wearing a microphone, but can you all hear me? Because when I was at the back before, I couldn't hear everything. Yes? Yeah. Great. Now, tomorrow, this is, this is a session, learning from mistakes. Now, do we really know what the mistakes are? Now, I can't preempt it, but what I'm trying to do is to sort of front load some ideas so that this conference really will make a difference, so that when, if hopefully, some of you will go, or all of you will go tomorrow, and you will take perhaps just some ideas that have, have come from this morning's session and try and move things on because at the moment we've got this sort of chasm between spiritual people that just want to um, believe in elves and, uh, and, and drop out and we've got the science people who say no no don't you know this is not the way to go you've got to uh, you've got to have an academic format everything's got to be researched now, as I said at the onset, you know, my, my view is, is that the only kind of real research that an individual can do for themselves is, is actual self-assay of some kind of, of substance because there's no way that uh, you're going to have any kind of uh, understanding of what's at stake unless you've actually experienced it. But it's not compulsory. If people want to argue for human rights, let's tease that out because... I want to talk a bit about rights to start with because I'm, I'm really concerned. Now, as Amy said, I'm sort of banned from doing anything in law anymore. I used to be before the High Court. I, was, I, was working, I used to work as a criminal lawyer and I, I found it quite depressing to go through all this sort of legal aid money and find that um, having you know, psychiatric reports done on people and psychologist reports done on people uh, to say that, oh, that this would be some mitigation for their, their drug supply or their drug habit that they were facing uh, prosecution for. And having spent all that time with young, vulnerable people and spent £20,000 of public money on experts to produce this, to have a, a Crown Court judge declare that my client is a cancer in society, uh, it, it makes me want to weep. And uh, honestly, it, I then sort of gave up this sort of role. And, uh, I got in touch, well, uh, Casey Hardison got in touch with me, explained quite a lot of ideas, which I've sort of developed a little bit, but most of it has is, is come from his brilliant mind when he was locked up for supplying um, various psychedelics, and he, he's thankfully out now, but he served the best part of 10 years um, in this country for offences. And I decided to try and argue for human rights from what he was basically saying about cognitive liberty and the right, the, the, the sovereignty of the self. So I ran a few sort of test cases. Now, I used to believe in this idea because everybody wants this idea of a thin end of the wedge. Now, what's the thin end of the wedge in a drug policy argument when you've got someone who's making DMT and LSD and everything? Well, it's cannabis, isn't it? Every, everybody's favorite subject it, it, is to talk about weed because it's nice, isn't it? It's soft, it's, it's not at all dangerous. And, of course, then we've got these medical users who, who really, really need it, to quote Baroness Meacher. This is sort of where we've retreated to, this cowardly sort of, in my view, position, that we're trying to make a little inroad, and so we, we come up with something um, like that. And I did try it, this is sort of, uh, even aware of what I've just said, because I realise going full frontal is going to actually cause um, a bit of a problem. And I, I can tell you, I've had worse experiences. I was, I was on my feet um, 
as an individual, normally a solicitor, which I, I'm a qualified solicitor, not a, not a barrister, has no rights of audience in the High Court. And the High Court is where they do the, the sort of the important constitutional work, where they define rights, um, or they sort of tease out rights, and they examine whether the government is acting lawfully or unlawfully. And that was uh, the forum to, to take it to. And so I did it as what they call a McKenzie friend, and I was given rights of audience to go to the High Court and argue for various um, people who I just, it was just ridiculous situations. Uh, Ofsted uh, award-winning science teachers struck off for, you know, tiny amounts of cannabis, you know, uh, going through the criminal system again and again. Uh, disabled people who were using uh, cannabis for their spasticity uh, issues uh, and saying, look, you, you must please, you know, look at this. If you can't see this, never mind what Casey's doing at the moment, Let's just get in there. And um, at the end of it, uh, you know, I went back a few times with different people and teasing different arguments, because it is actually quite a difficult argument to understand. It's all about the flipping of, of the law. The law is actually working in reverse, and I'll try and say a bit about that, though that was the subject of my talk last time here. So I don't want to sort of repeat it all, but I'll, I'll, I'll give you an idea about some of these flips that I think are, are causing a, a real problem in our understanding. So you got this to, to challenge people with, it, even at this conference. But they ended up saying, well, um, Mr. Bickle, if you come back arguing for human rights or some maladministration of the law for anything to do with, uh, any, for any drug user, we will uh, take the whole costs of both sides of, of this. And I wasn't even being paid for this, bear in mind. Everybody else is on high salaries. And you will pay for the entire process at the High Court. And the High Court has extensive powers of debt recovery. So, you know, I wasn't going to martyr myself completely being a family man um, in that sense. So I'm sort of still at it in a way. But I, I, I think that human rights, although they're very sacred and everybody wants to sort of stop David Cameron taking away the Human Rights Act or they want to have a, a new bill, let's have a look at what rights really are in context. Now, I know I've got people here who are rights experts and uh, I've read some wonderful stuff. And I'm not doing an, a, a sort of academic talk here because uh, it, last time I tried to, and uh, I wasn't up to it myself probably, you know, to say dumb it down, well dumb down probably as good as it gets with me, so I, I, I'm not going to give you lots of references and, and that kind of thing, I'm just speaking from my experience and, and the thoughts um, that I've had and the discussions I had with Casey about this. But human rights, um, well do you really want to, to sort of to invest your future in going cap in hand to a judge saying, oh, I'm in terrible pain, yes or no? And it is actually, um, sort of politically, a, a weak position. The fact that we celebrate human rights, it's almost out of like a necessity. If we lived in a sort of a free society or utopia, you wouldn't need rights at all. I mean, you know, the, and what's happened is, uh, although rights are a useful tool it, here and now, the problem is, is that notwithstanding that they're a long way from, free, from freedom, um, they're, they're a long way back from freedom, that um, they've become very, very degraded. And I'd be interested to know what people think, because I, it's, it's not that what I'm going to tell you about rights, it, 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 there's so many theories, it's not that this, this is the, the gospel, and what I'm going to say is, is that I think a certain type of right, which is, is a, a, what is often known as a negative right, or a freedom to do something, it's far more important in, in this arena for what we need to be thinking about than sort of social rights about entitlement and, and welfare. And I don't, if you could just sort of have a think about whether you think these things are rights or not, in this paradigm that I'm talking about, I'm talking about these civil rights, not something that anybody else might come up with. And just count them on your fingers. So if, if you think it's a right, put it in your right hand, just one, that's a, that's a right, or if you think it's... Give it the finger with the left hand if you think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's not a right. But let's, let's have a look. I mean, what about the, um, the right to water? I mean, is that a right? Just count it amongst yourselves. What about, so that you've got one finger on the left or the right, so you, you, if, it's, if it's a right, on the right hand. So what about um, the right not to be offended and told you a terrible sort of, you know, whatever denomination you are, sexual orientation you are, somebody's like shouting out at you. Do you have a right not to be offended by that? What about, that's another point to mark, what about the, the right 
to get to work without all these pickets getting in the way. What about rights of children? Do children have rights? What about rights of animals? Do animals have rights? Now, how, how many uh, sort of real rights do you think there are in those five? I think I gave you five examples. Uh, uh, and how many do you think are, are, are not rights? So how many, has anybody got five? Do they think all five are rights? Right to water, right not to be offended, children, animals, and the other one. <laughs> what about none of them are rights? Does anybody think none of them are rights? Well, nobody's saying much. I mean, there's no third wall here, by the way. If you want to sort of just shout and, and, and throw things at me, if you for so daring to, to suggest that children's rights don't exist, then, you know, I'm not, like, going to sort of put a tracksuit on and, and, and jog down to the hospital and say, ah, you kids have got no, no rights. I can do what I like. But what I'm talking about are rights are a tool of empowerment, not a, not a label of need and victimhood. So if, for example, uh, you believe uh, passionately in animals, and I, I'm not making any qualitative judgment about any of these issues. I mean, you know, you're, everybody's entitled to an opinion. It's not because you, the right doesn't exist, that, it, that it, it's wrong, or, or, or that it, it, you, 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 know, you can't believe it in that, or the animals shouldn't be protected. But what I'm saying is, is that whilst I, uh, it doesn't matter what I believe, but let's say I, I believe completely that you know, the animals should never be harmed by people. They don't have rights because it's me that's going to go along and protect them. I'm going to go along to that abattoir and try and, and stop these people. So because those animals don't have rights, it's because they, they're, they're, they're the victim of this situation. So what I'm, I'm not sort of denying... Um, you know, uh, things that people believe in to be good. What I'm say talking about is the language of rights is very important to preserve between these positive and negative rights. Because the negative rights are freedoms to do things and the positive rights are demands for intervention. So in these examples, let's say the right to go to work and not be picketed, what you're asking for is the police to come along and break up the picket line to take away those people's rights of free assembly. So there's always this so-called balance of rights. But I think we need to sort of um, step back and start to look at what rights are really important because all the rights that we've got, just about, they all have all these caveats anyway that, you, that the courts can sort of dismiss them in the interest of uh, preserving uh, health and morals and public order. And like I say, do you really want uh, Lord Justice Leveson uh, who I, I was actually in front of, to decide um, th these things for you um, as, if it's, as, as if you need to defer. Because what's happening is, is that we're all deferring to the others. We're deferring to uh, people we think are, are wiser than us. Just because somebody's got some, some wig on and they've studied law, it doesn't mean to say that they can censor your possibilities of being, because that's what it really is. That's what it represents. When you consume a drug for whatever purpose, whether, you know, and we always, everybody wants to talk about, I'm doing it for spiritual purposes, I'm doing it for this purpose, religious uh, health and everything. I mean, fine, it's great that you're doing that, but it's not the thin end of the wedge that's going to make the difference. It, I'm not against people sort of saying, well, look, we've got some scientific research and it's, it, it's good. What I'm saying is we need to have a political context for all of this. Because without the context, we're going to end up uh, playing right into their hands. So there's a lot of like these flips of uh, to deny us this agency. Um, I think um, the, the, um, the previous speaker was, was talking about preparation uh, in the Misuse of Drugs Act now. They, they, they came out and said the preparation of, of, of a chemical is, is, is actually it's a noun. It's a thing but they changed it into a verb. So it's something that you do. So they, they, they sort of flipped it, and they flipped subject and object. This is the thing we were talking about last time was, uh, you know, do illegal drugs actually exist? I mean, w where does this idea come from? It's a very powerful idea, and I know it sounds at first like I'm just being pedantic to point out that, well, actually, drugs can't be illegal. Objects have no legal status at all. I mean, it's only the, what you do that, that matters. But um, so all those things you could do with anything, with, uh, you know, sandwiches, whatever, you know, could supply them and prepare them and possess them or whatever, th these all translate into offences with drugs. But it doesn't mean to say that drugs are illegal, but then they call them controlled drugs. 
And then they've read that word controlled as a, a verb, when in fact it's a noun. Because you can't control drugs, they don't behave, they just are. You can't control drugs, you can only control people. So once we get into this idea that um, somehow drugs have the agency, so they can be legal or illegal, licit or illicit, I don't care what words you're using or having a war against these objects, um, we're sort of not only linguistically taking ourselves out of the equation, but in law it's even more important. I mean, we all know that like a disabled toilet isn't a broken toilet, it's a toilet for disabled people, but it's a little flip of language that we use. But when you do that in law, you actually lose all agency. And this is why they couldn't understand when I was saying, oh, but look, you know, this, this chap's just grown a few plants to save the NHS. He's even got a hospital pain consultant who's actually authorised uh, Sativex for this guy. Uh, and he's growing a few plants because the, you know, the health trust couldn't actually pay for it. And they just go, yeah, yeah but, but cannabis is illegal. And they missed the whole point of the Misuse of Drugs Act, which is an act to make provision for. To make provision for. Because the human has been taken right out of that. Now, it's same, I'm going to sort of be a bit controversial because I know I started off with talking about the science and the sort of, you know, the, the more hippie thing. I think all these sides need to get together and cohere a, an understanding that we're not going to abstract our, ourselves and we're going to actually think about what cognitive liberty actually is it's something very personal it should be private if you want you know it shouldn't be a business of, of, of anybody but it's it's only when they have that harm to others threshold is crossed that your liberties should be taken away and really the reason why your liberties are being taken away this is why um i was saying about uh, human rights i've sort of lost a lot of faith. I'm not saying they're entirely impotent, but they need to be very, very strong and, 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 and coherent, is that we don't actually exist for, in, I don't mean in, in, in like I've just had some acid and I don't exist, I mean that I, we, we don't exist as a legal subject anymore because the drug has, has, has replaced it. I mean, do, do people know what I'm trying to say here? Because it isn't, so it's, though it's incredibly simple, it's because we've got used to thinking a certain way that, that there is a, a, a thing as an illegal drug and we need to do something about trying to, to change the, the, you know, the balance a little bit. We're not getting anywhere because it's like a binary, it's like a, a light switch which is either on or off, it's either legal or, it, or, or it's illegal. Whereas if you're sort of you know, driving a car or something, you could sort of operate your agency and you can drive lawfully or unlawfully, you've got all that human agency there, which is what the law is supposed to be about. The rule of law is supposed to is supposed to, to recognise that. But because of the misuse of the law, the government has completely uh, created an artificial divide which you will think of as between drugs, like alcohol is a legal drug and cannabis therefore is, is an illegal drug, and they've drawn a line there. That is a complete myth, because it, it's not drugs that is being controlled. It's not about drugs. It, if there's nothing else you remember, it's, nothing about, it's not about drugs. It's about people. It should be about outcomes. So somebody's like lying on the floor, uh, you know, screaming uh, in the street, there's an outcome that might need to be addressed and then sort of work back. But in fact, the whole law is working the other direction, completely the other direction because it's substance first. So as soon as you sort of say, well, cannabis is illegal, it's end of story. And it isn't. That's the thing, it isn't. So don't accept it. Don't let anybody know, know who they are um, at this conference get away with, with using it, because there's a real mischief in there. It's not just me trying to make a, a, a semantic, only a semantic point. What I'm saying to you is, is that you cannot rescue the subject, which is, the, is you, the legal subject, while you, you are, in fact, in the eyes of law, the, the object. Is there any questions on that? Because I, I didn't want to go, round, a lot more I could say, but I didn't want to go right to the end, as our time flies when you're on a rant about something. Um, but, uh, I mean, this, people understand, last time I tried to explain it as smoke and mirrors, and I, um, a few people I recognise from last time. But literally, they've made this mirror about, uh, using nouns and verbs, uh, and, or uh, adjectives, uh, uh, misplaced adjectives, and then they, they, they flipped things. So like the burden of proof, um, when you have to go to a, a court, that, uh, uh, that you've got this... Um, 
idea that you have to prove yourself as to why um, what you're doing is reasonable. When actually, it should be the other way around, it shouldn't it? But what you, the, the judges should be saying, well, actually, it should be the government who needs to be proving why what you're doing is unreasonable, not for you to prove why it's reasonable. And somehow, everything's, somehow, we've all got everything twisted around. So we were waiting for, you know, research from, you know, Ben Sessler, David Nutt to say, oh, we, we, we think, you know, it might be okay, you know, in the future for people to have these drugs if you're veterans or if you... But no, this, this isn't the way forward. I, I'm not... I'm not trashing this top research that's going on at this uh, conference. What I'm saying is it needs a political uh, uh, context because without that, it ends up just becoming uh, like pharmacracy. Do you know what I mean? I mean like uh, theoc theocracy is what, that's the rule of God. Or, you know, this is the rule of doctors, the rule of scientists will take over. Don't defer your autonomy to anybody else.